Hi, Lee Veris here with an in-depth look at Fujifilm's new raw processing software, that's the XRAW Studio. Uh, we're going to examine this desktop application that's designed for batch processing Fuji X RAW files and applying the film simulations uh, using the actual camera hardware to deliver the highest quality JPEGs or, in the case of the medium format GFX, TIFF files. So let's take a look. XRAW Studio can provide serious quality benefits over other raw processing software because by utilizing the hardwired in-camera engine, the film simulation renderings just plain look better. Um, shadow enhancement works better without the halo artifacts that you get with other software. Um, the noise reduction is actually better with enhanced detail. And finally, uh, the Fuji Auto Lens Correction works to reduce chromatic aberration, fringing, and other subtle distortions, uh, and uh, it, it just makes for a much better looking image. So let's take a look. All right, so here we are. I've launched the XRAW Studio app, and this is, uh, this is the interface uh, we can see here. Um, you'll notice that really nothing you can't really do anything with this software until you connect a camera you can see up here in the, uh, in the upper left corner here waiting for a camera connected a little little japanese english um, so let's connect the camera and um, now you can see it identifies the camera and the version of the of the software um, and now we have uh, we can actually work in the in the in the in the software. So I have here at the bottom a, a sort of thumbnail strip that's uh, giving me the folders here. We're going to take a look at these. Uh, you, you can click on a on a thumbnail. Let me see if I can. I can't really make this any smaller. This is one of the one of the things about this interface is that it it uh, it's somewhat limited. You can't really change the size of these panels or anything like this. Anyway, here's, uh, here's an image and um, I can choose different things here. Um, there's a, my profile as shot condition. Uh, I think I was using Astia. Um, yeah, so this you can see the film simulation I was using here, Astia. All of these things are as I shot it. Um, I like to reduce the highlight tone and shadow tone, which gives me um, actually, minus two in the shadow tone gives me more shadow detail. So this is sort of like using the uh, highlights and the shadows um, uh, in Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw. But this way, I'm sort of opening up the shadows and I'm bringing down the highlights a bit, uh, and it gives me a little bit flatter rendering. I used I like to take a little bit of the color out of the Astia. Otherwise, I like the way the colors rendered in Astia. Uh, we have sharpness at zero, noise reduction at zero. Um, lens modulation is on, color space, sRGB, my favorite color space. And uh, so these are the conditions that it was shot. So we can, um, for instance, I can give it a little plus uh, exposure here. If I wanted to open it up, you can see right away it responds. It lets me know um, just how I'm, uh, uh, how it's going to look. Um, perhaps the the most useful thing here is is changing the film simulation. So we can go ahead and try out, like you know, what would this look like in Velvia? And you can see a bit richer colors, a little more contrast. Um, if we use the classic Chrome, it's going to dull down the blues. You see how it, it got this kind of dull uh, color look. Um, the Acros is kind of interesting. If we and I usually use Acros with the red filter, so let's see what that looks like. And sure enough, there's there's the black and white rendering with the red filter, and uh, we can try out different ones. You know, see what the green filter looks like, for instance. You know. Um, yellow filter and I think you know I'd have to really think that the, the red filter just looks better here 
Um, so this is useful to to go around and 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 change your um, color rendering just by picking different profiles. We can also um, change how the shadows render if we want darker shadows. I would use plus settings. You can see uh, the minus two opens up the shadows a bit. Um, we can add more color. So these are ways of sort of fine tuning the, the rendering um, or take out more color. You know, there's, they're, they're fairly subtle and um, only limited to what you can do in, in camera, right? So for the most part, um, these are useful if you have reasonable images to begin with. Let's take a look at this one. Now here's one where um, it was shot uh, with Astia. Let's see if I if I tried uh, Velvia, get a little bit more vivid look out of it. And uh, in this case, you know, maybe um, we'll put the shadow tone at zero and I'll throw the background a little darker. Um, maybe that's too dark. So you can kind of see working with this is not quite as, you don't have quite the same kind of control that you would in say Lightroom, um, but you you get the rendering that the camera uh, delivers for the in-camera JPEGs, and a lot of times that's all you need. And in fact, um, I think it's it's uh, if you're really looking for an exact rendering that's exactly like the, the camera would do it, then this is the way to achieve that. The the renderings inside Camera Raw are not exactly identical. Um, let's take a look at this one. This one, you notice here, I can't, I have no access to this. I can view the image, but I can't control it. That's because this was taken with the GFX and I have the Fujifilm X-Pro2 connected. So I can't process this file through the X-Pro2. That's why I put it in here, just to illustrate that. So when you when you encounter this, it's because it was shot on a different camera. Um, let's go back to this one. So this was was shot in Velvia, and you know perhaps the Asti would look a little bit better. I think it does. There you go. So although it's it's useful uh, to try out different um, film simulations in this, uh, and you can now just simply convert and it will generate a JPEG and puts it right next to it there. So that's the JPEG rendering. Um, the, perhaps the, where this really becomes more interesting is in, we have a kind of a difficult photo situation. So here's the case in point. This, this image, um, and I've, I've sort of already worked it up a little bit, um, so I've, I've got my, um, my renderings here. Um, that I that I feel look better. Um, this was a situation where um, I was shooting in ch very bad lighting in a in a little pub, uh, trying to document the performance here of these musicians, and um, you can see I have to really push the uh, exposure of this one and two thirds EV, so that's a lot. Um, I also did a little white balance shift here. Um, the um, I believe this uh, the ISO that this was shot at. Let's see if we can find it here. Um, aperture ISO. Well, it says 400, uh, but it was seriously underexposed, and uh, so I have to kind of rescue it in uh, in either Camera Raw or here in the Fuji X Raw Studio. So what's interesting is that uh, when I process it here in XR Studio and we compare it to um, to the rendering in Lightroom, let's go to Lightroom, and we can see on on the left is the Fuji rendered JPEG, and on the right is the rendering inside of Lightroom, and uh, I, I've kind of deliberately tried to get them to sort of match here um, and get the same level of, of sharpness and et cetera. So let's, let's compare now. So again, on the right is Camera Raw. On the left is the Fuji um, 
JPEG. Uh, and the reason I zoomed into this area is you can kind of see that there's there's some kind of fringing uh, against the you know the the highlight against the shadow here, and it's much worse in Camera Raw. Uh, because in camera raw, they don't really have auto lens corrections for any of the Fuji lenses. So this is one advantage here. This this looks better, um, and it, it seems to have like better shadow detail. Even though I've really cranked open the, the shadows a lot in camera raw, I can't quite get exactly the same look. Um, and the trying to get the same focus that I get in the Fuji software, when I do that in a camera, I also focus, you know, sharpens up the grain. So it looks grainier, um, especially like in the, in the shadow areas here, there's, there's some noise reduction going on sort of selectively in, in the Fuji process JPEGs that, that pulls the noise out of the darker areas uh, and it just makes everything look cleaner. Um, and the Fuji, File, even though I have sharpening at zero, um, there's there's still a little bit of sharpening that goes on, and it just looks sharper. I mean, I can't I can't sharpen this up much more because it just makes the grain look way worse. But comparing the sharpness here, uh, the Fuji JPEG definitely looks sharper, and it's also kind of less noisy. Um, you know, subtle difference in the color rendering. Um, But really, it's like it's just the difference in quality that you see, and and still it's just slightly kind of more more detail. Um, you know, the just the rendering of the detail looks a little bit different. So, um, you know, is this file acceptable? It's to totally acceptable. You know, if you were to deliver this to a client, they wouldn't complain about it. Uh, I just, you know, find that there are enough differences that I would want to work with the Fuji software as opposed to the Adobe software. So does it really make sense to use Fujifilm X-Raw Studio? It does if you're looking for the best possible quality, and especially if you're working with less than ideal photo situations. Um, then the, the Extra Studio's control of the in-camera hardware rendering engine uh, just gives you a better quality than you can get out of uh, Adobe uh, Camera Raw or other third-party software. Uh, all that being said, um, the differences between, say, a Fuji processed JPEG and an Adobe processed file uh, can be subtle and um, Especially uh, if you have ideal photo situations, you may not find that the difference warrants the extra effort. Um, however, um, it, you, if you really want to coax the best possible quality out of your files, then uh, the XRAW Studio is, is definitely a, worth a consideration. Uh, it's only available for the higher end cameras at the moment. We're hoping that uh, Fuji gets that software available for the other cameras as well. Um, but um, you know, I, I think that if you are uh, looking for the ultimate quality and you have the time, you can uh, uh, certainly consider using uh, Fujifilm X-Raw Studio. Now, all that uh, also, uh, it, it, you have to understand that X-Raw Studio is just a raw processing application. It's not something that um, does anything um, like Lightroom in terms of its asset management capabilities. You can't give star ratings, for instance, or you can't, you know, publish through to the web and all kinds of other things that um, Lightroom is especially good for. So um, it, it is something that you're going to need in addition to your regular software. Uh, but um, from time to time, it may be worth uh, pulling it out and you have to attach your camera. That's another kind of drawback. But uh, uh, it's, it is uh, worth considering for those times when you have a less than ideal conditions and you want the best possible quality. So for all those Fuji lovers out there, uh, good luck and uh, keep on taking pictures and keep loving your Fuji camera. And I'll see you in the next video.